Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings. Musculoskeletal System The objectives for this unit, Musculoskeletal System, are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce various medical terms related to the musculoskeletal system, describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the musculoskeletal system. Let's start with an overview of the human musculoskeletal system. Sometimes the musculoskeletal system is broken down into two different systems, the muscular system and the skeletal system. The muscular components are primarily the muscles of the body, while the skeletal components include the bones and joints. The musculoskeletal system has four main functions. It provides the internal framework for the body. It helps support the body. It protects the internal organs. Moreover, the musculoskeletal system enables body movement. The bones are connected to each other to form the skeleton. The skeleton comprises the framework for the body. There are approximately 206 bones throughout the body. Another component of the musculoskeletal system is its joints. Joints are the place where two bones meet. Ligaments at the joints hold the bones together. This arrangement gives flexibility to the skeleton. Muscles are connected to the skeleton. Your muscles help you move and help your body work. Different types of muscles have different jobs. Muscle disorders are also referred to as myopathies. Remember that myo means muscle and pathy means disease. There are many problems that can affect the muscles. Muscle disorders can cause weakness, pain, or even paralysis. While there may be no known cause for a muscle disorder, some of the common causes of myopathy include injury or overuse, such as sprains or strains, cramps or tendinitis, genetics, such as muscular dystrophy, some cancers, Inflammation, such as myositis. Diseases of nerves that affect muscles. Infections. Certain medicines. Treatments for myopathies depend on the disease or condition and specific causes. Supportive and symptomatic treatment may be the only treatment available or necessary for some disorders. For example, a minor ankle sprain may require applications of ice and restricted activity. Treatment for other disorders may include drug therapy, such as immunosuppressives, physical therapy, bracing to support weakened muscles, and surgery. The prognosis for individuals with a myopathy varies. Some individuals have a normal lifespan and little or no disability. For others, however, the disorder may be progressive, severely disabling, life-threatening, or fatal. Myositis is the inflammation of your skeletal muscles, which are also called the voluntary muscles. These are the muscles you consciously control to help you move your body. An injury, infection, or autoimmune disease can cause myositis. For example, polymyositis causes muscle weakness, usually in the muscles closest to the trunk of your body. Dermatomyositis causes muscle weakness, plus a skin rash. Both diseases are usually treated with prednisone, a steroid medicine, and sometimes other medicines.
Diagnosing myositis is often a complicated and lengthy process. Doctors may use one or more of the following tests to help confirm a specific diagnosis. Conventional blood tests, where the doctors look for elevated levels of muscle enzymes in a patient's blood samples. Muscle and skin biopsy, where small samples of muscle tissue show abnormalities in muscles, including inflammation, damage, and abnormal proteins. For those with skin symptoms, doctors often biopsy a piece of skin to study. Electrodiagnostic tests, such as magnetic resonance imaging scans, or MRI, might reveal inflammation in muscles. And electromyograms, or EMGs, might detect changes in muscles' electrical patterns that indicate muscle disease and indicate which muscles are affected. Antibody testing, which looks for antibodies. These more detailed blood tests confirm a diagnosis and provide insight into the possible course of the disease, as well as potential complications. Treatment for myositis varies tremendously from patient to patient, and no one treatment works for everyone. Physicians may use a combination of drugs, physical therapy, or dietary supplements to treat the patient. Muscular dystrophy refers to a group of more than 30 inherited diseases that cause muscle weakness and muscle loss. Some forms appear in infancy or childhood, while others may not appear until middle age or later. All forms of muscular dystrophy grow worse as the person's muscles get weaker. Most people eventually lose the ability to walk. There is no cure for muscular dystrophy. Treatments include physical and speech therapy, orthopedic devices, surgery, and medications. Some people with muscular dystrophy have mild cases that worsen slowly. Other cases are disabling and severe. Here are some key word parts for the muscular system, along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. Now let's look at the various components of the skeleton. The spine, or backbone, is a vertical column of bones. It supports the weight of the head, neck, and trunk of the body and protects the spinal cord. It is also known as the spinal or vertebral column and is divided into five sections. Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, coccyx. The cervical vertebrae are in the neck. The thoracic vertebrae are in the chest. The lumbar vertebrae are in the lower back. The sacrum is a group of five fused vertebrae. The coccyx, or tailbone, is a group of several small fused vertebrae. We commonly refer to the arm as our upper extremity. The arm consists of a variety of bones. The humerus is the long bone in the upper arm. The ulna is one of two bones in the forearm and lies on the little finger side of the forearm. The other bone in the forearm is called the radius. It lies on the thumb side of the forearm. 
carpals are our wrist bones, while metacarpals are our hand bones. Our phalanges are the bones of the fingers. We commonly refer to the leg as the lower extremity. The leg consists of numerous bones as well. These include the femur, or thigh bone, which is the long bone in the upper leg. The kneecap is the patella. The tibia, or shin bone, is the large bone on the medial side of the lower leg. The fibula is the very thin bone of the lower leg. The femur and tibia are the primary weight-bearing bones. The bones of the ankle and foot include tarsals, which are the ankle bones, metatarsals, which are the bones of the foot, and phalanges, which are the bones of the toes. The most common of the bone conditions are fractures. We sometimes refer to fractures as having a broken bone. Fractures are categorized according to how the bone breaks. If the broken bone punctures the skin, it is called an open or compound fracture. If the broken bone does not puncture the skin, it is referred to as a closed fracture. A fracture that is caused by force or torsion during an accident or sports activity is a stress fracture. Stress fractures are very small cracks in the bone. Fractures commonly happen because of car accidents, falls, or sports injuries. Another cause is osteoporosis, which causes weakening of the bones. Symptoms of a fracture are an out-of-place or misshapen limb or joint, swelling, bruising, or bleeding, intense pain, numbness and tingling, and limited mobility or inability to move a limb. Arthritis literally means joint inflammation. Although it describes a symptom or sign rather than a specific diagnosis, the word arthritis is often used to refer to any disorder that affects the joints. Arthritis is characterized by pain, swelling, inflammation, and stiffness. One type of arthritis, osteoarthritis, is often related to aging or to an injury. Other types occur when your immune system, which normally protects your body from infection, attacks your body's own tissues. Rheumatoid arthritis is the most common form of this kind of arthritis. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis is a form of the disease that happens in children. Infectious arthritis is an infection that has spread from another part of the body to the joint. Another bone condition that we often hear about is osteoporosis. This condition is the abnormal thinning of the bone structures due to loss of calcium and phosphorus. Osteoporosis makes your bones weak and more likely to break. Anyone can develop osteoporosis, but it is more common in older women. As many as half of all women and a quarter of men older than 50 will break a bone due to osteoporosis. Risk factors include getting older, being small and thin, having a family history of osteoporosis, taking certain medicines, being a white or Asian woman, having osteopenia, which is low bone mass. Although there is no cure for osteoporosis, there are steps one can take to prevent, slow, or stop its progress. In some cases, you may even be able to improve bone density and reverse the disorder to some degree. Getting enough calcium and vitamin D, as well as appropriate exercise, are essential to the bone health of everyone. 
Oftentimes, a medication may be prescribed. Here are some key word parts for the skeletal system along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. How can you use the information on the musculoskeletal system to help make a diagnosis in the case on this slide? Mary is an 84-year-old white female. She recently fell and fractured her femur, which is the large bone in the thigh. The doctor ordered a test, which showed loss of bone density. This fracture was probably due to stress, arthritis, osteoporosis. Did you guess osteoporosis? Remember that this condition is the abnormal thinning of the bone structure due to loss of calcium and phosphorus. Osteoporosis makes your bones weak and more likely to break. This concludes the musculoskeletal system. In summary, you should be able to define, understand, and correctly pronounce various medical terms related to the musculoskeletal system. You should also be able to describe common diseases and conditions and recognize various treatments related to the musculoskeletal system.